Minister. Thanks, Cahirlik, and I'm uh, delighted to be joined by my colleague uh, Deputy O'Callaghan and our Transport Spokesperson, uh, Deputy Robert Troy, uh, to discuss this issue with the Minister. Uh, one area clearly where we would like and welcome reprofiling, Minister, is in relation to the Metrolink project, um, not in relation to Metro North. We've made that pretty clear. Uh, and in spite of what you said and the commitments you gave two weeks ago, uh, in a topical response uh, that there would be no deviation in relation to the Metrolink project. Clearly, that is now on the cards, and on this side of the House, we actually take the opportunity to welcome it. Uh, while uh, the topical issue raises and mentions specific towns, villages, townlands of Furhouse, Knockline, Rathfarnham, Temple Oak, Greenhills, clearly uh, the link that we're intending uh, and that we would like to see pursued couldn't get to those places without going through places first like uh, Terenure, Harles Cross and Rathmines, and I know my colleague will speak about that. I very firmly believe, Minister, that uh, investment and spending on public infrastructure, public transport infrastructure projects ought to be democratic. And there are parts of Dublin that are well served with the Green Line Lewis, with the best QBC and bus corridor in the country, the most successful one, and with the Dart Line. And then there is this huge, vast gap between the, red, uh, the Green Line Lewis and the Red Line Lewis, where there is no uh, adequate public transport promised. It's a part of uh, Dublin that you served for five years um, uh, when you were uh, a TD. Um, this isn't the first time that my colleagues have called for this. Uh, in fact, it's not a very recent uh, development. Going back in the day, I have regularly called for the connecting the connection of the red line and the green line, and the obvious thing is to connect those two back into the city again. So these vast swathes of the city, uh, the reprofiling of the Metrolink project offers a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for the government to invest hard-earned taxpayers' money into areas where there is a significant lacking in the provision of Dublin transport or public transport and where the NTA is attempting to shoehorn uh, bus connects into front gardens and into business premises along that route. Thanks, uh, Thank you. Uh, Next up is Deputy Noel Rock. Uh, Luck, thank you very much. Minister, um, first of all, I'd like to welcome this morning's report. Um, I'd like to welcome the North Link proposal, as I read in the Irish Times. I'd like to welcome the clarity that is beginning to be brought to this issue. And I'd like to welcome that the NTA have followed the suggestion, which I put forward both in this chamber and indeed last year uh, in the committee, to resolve the South Side impasse, um, which clearly is bogging down this project at this stage. To be clear though, Minister, my first choice is for the project to proceed as is, from Sandyford to Swords, uh, as the NTA set out, and as you've argued for in public. Uh, I think it's a good project, I think it's a worthy project, a good investment, and as I've said to you before, Minister, a great legacy project to attach your name to. However, it's quite clear that this Southside squabble and the endless su succession of unsolicited, uncosted, untested, alternative routes being set forward by all parties and none, none of which are costed, mean that this un looks very unlikely to me and I imagine to you, Minister, to proceed in any form of timely manner. Accordingly, as I see it, our options are one, to proceed with a project in two phases, as I suggested last year, commencing the badly needed, long overdue Metro North aspect first. Two, to assess various alternative routes as set forward here by the opposition party, thereby certainly delaying the badly needed, long delayed metro beyond 2027. Why parties are proposing this, which would effectively shaft the north side, who have been promised the metro for three decades now at this stage, I cannot understand, Minister, and I hope you will not accept. And three, the third option is running the risk of no metro project at all, which is the least desirable option. So accordingly, Minister, I'm aware that I'm running out of time, and I have to ask a question. So I will keep my first question to you simple. Given the report in the Irish Independent that you sought and had a crisis meeting with the NTA, and given the report in the Irish Times, which details that the proposal, which will, if you bear with me, Carla, which will come before the public, mirrors my own suggestion that the North side will proceed first, can you confirm that this is your current Thank understanding you. of the forthcoming proposal? And if not, can you confirm what the forthcoming proposal from the NTA is, Minister. Deputy Jim O'Callaghan. Yeah. Minister, if it is the case that the proposal to dig up the Green Lewis line has been abandoned, I welcome that. It was a crazy proposal considering that hundreds of millions of euro were spent on constructing a very effective and very popular Green, Green Lewis line. 
I'd ask you to bring clarity to it. I don't believe that the clarity exists. We've read reports and papers, and we'd ask you to confirm whether you know that is or is not the case. But what you also need to recognise, Minister, is that it is not the case that a metro on the south side should be abandoned. As has been repeatedly argued by myself and Deputy the Hart, Dublin is crying out for a metro service out to the southwest of the city to places such as Terenure, Temple Oak, Fairhouse, Ratfarnham, in the areas throughout outside my constituency, but as necessary to have a proper effective metro system in the city. You'll also be aware, Minister, that at present there's a proposal going on in respect of bus connects. And some of the proposals are useful. We need to have faster bus traffic into the city and we need cycle lanes. But there's also a proposal to significantly impact the people who are living on the Lower Kimmage Road, the Rathfarnham Road, Terenure Road East and indeed the Rathgar Road. And in respect of the three latter roads, each one of them has a proposal put forward that the NTA is going to compulsorily acquire up to six metres from the front gardens. Now, that is going to cost a fortune. It is impractical and it is vehemently opposed by the people in the area. If we had some sensible linked up thinking in respect of transport proposals for the city, I'd ask you to come forward, Minister, and make a recommendation and suggestion to the NTA that if we have the drilling machine for the metro from the north, uh, from the airport, to, into the city centre, we should keep it and we should direct it southwest to those parts of the city that are crying out for public rail infrastructure. And as Deputy Rock said, it would be a great legacy for you, Minister, but you need to identify what the political objectives are. And if you identify them, I think you'll get the support of the local communities. But there's an opportunity here to link up the metro system and the bus connect system and solve a proposal by coming up with one integrated plan. Thank you, Deputy O'Callaghan. Minister, you have four minutes for initial reply. Thank you, indeed, Kankula, and thank you, thank you to the deputies for raising this topical issue. Obviously, I've read the media reports this week in relation to Metrolink and the NTA's development of a preferred route for public consultation. I can confirm that I met with the NTA this week in order to be updated on the project separately. I also met recently with the Chair of Transport in in Infrastructure Ireland, during which the issue of Metrolink was discussed. I've said repeatedly in the Doyle that the NTA and TII are currently developing revised proposals in relation to Metrolink. And it's obvious, obvious that those revised proposals will take account of the issues already raised by members of the public during last year's public consultation. That shouldn't be a shock to anyone here. In fact, it's why we have public consultations. And I welcome the fact that state agencies under my department's remit are so proactive in engaging with the public and listening to their views. And yes, last year's emerging preferred route did give rise to a lot of public commentary, particularly in relation to a number of different local areas across the city. Huge transformative projects will always cause impacts. Of course, ultimately, those impacts are intended to be positive, but we all know that in order to, take that, to get to that place, there can occasionally be unwelcome, sometimes unpalatable impacts. So there's always a delicate balancing act between delivering an effective project and doing so in a way that minimizes disruption. I've made clear that it's really important that the public can continue to travel conveniently in our city, that is essential, and travel disruption needs to be minimised. That's precisely what the NTA and TI are looking to do. They're looking to develop a new cross-city public transport corridor via the airport and out to Swords, and in doing so, increase capacity on the Lewis Green Line. <clears throat> and in trying to achieve that ambition, they're also listening to the views of the public, particularly those along the Lewis Green Line, as to what, if any, is an acceptable level of disruption to deliver the increased capacity that the line needs. And of course, we need to deliver, once and for all, a long-awaited cross-city link via the airport and out to North County Dublin. I think it would be inappropriate for me to comment on particular alignments or proposals while the statutory agencies are still completing their work. As I've stated previously in this House, we need to move away from designing transport projects by press release and instead move towards what our public deserves, a planned and integrated development of public transport and land use strategies. We have a statutory transport strategy for the Great Dub Dublin area, which covers the period 2016 to 2035. That strategy is the basis for the development of an integrated transport system for the entire GDA. It includes proposals across all public transport platforms, including metro, light rail and bus. Development of the strategy was subject to a full public consultation period, and any and, and all interested parties were able to make their views known. The deputies have asked specifically about the Rathfarnham Terenure Corridor. Let me assure you that the needs of the entire city were considered by the NTA in drawing up their transport strategy. That strategy included looking at present and future travel demands on all the key corridors. The extremely detailed analysis conducted concluded the actual and forecasted demand along the Rathfarnham Terenure Corridor does not meet the threshold that would justify a metro-style service. The corridor is relatively low density with limited potential for new development. The present and future transport demand levels on the corridor 
as such that can be best be met through an improved bus service that's exactly what bus connects will seek to provide metrolink is a big project it's one which we all have views on i want to reassure the house as a minister for transport i have two key priorities here delivering the improved public transport system to serve the needs of the public now and into the future and making sure that the agency do this in a way that avoids unacceptable travel disruption i've told my agencies that any significant period where the service is closed is unacceptable. I've also told them that the suggestion, which you've all read about in the media, that there will be some sort of, that there will be uh, four-year closures or, or, or something approaching this are absolutely off, off, the, off the agenda. They won't, I will not countenance that sort of a delay or anything reflecting a fraction of it uh, on, the, on, on any major piece of inter infrastructure or any major artery into any of our cities. So I'll be encouraging everyone to engage again with the NTA and TIA when they launch their new public consultation after they publish their preferred route in the coming weeks. Thank you, Minister, and on time, um, the deputies, one minute, um, final uh, supplementary reply. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, uh, Minister, it is, it is very clear, in spite of what you say, that the, the original Metrolink has planned. Um, for, today was the first time I saw a mention of four years, but uh, no one has argued or queried the fact to run the metro along the existing Green Lewis line would shut that line down for a period of up to two years. And if you've rightly recognised, I think, to shut it down for a period of even two weeks would be catastrophic for commuters. So um, you need to clarify that. Uh, you haven't denied the fact that it could close it for up to a period of two years or parts of it, which would just be catastrophic for commuters. You've also basically said, and I'm glad to see you've put it in writing, this government does not support the provision of Lewis or Metro style uh, transport to all those areas I mentioned in my constituency and that's the news that I will bring back to my constituency. It was news you mentioned before when you la launched Project 2040 and I mentioned at that time in this uh, chamber that there was absolutely nothing for the constituency of Dublin South West in Project 2040. You've just reaffirmed now that in any review or reprofiling of Metrolink that there is nothing uh, for the people of Dublin South West uh, in such a reprofiling. And that is a topic that I guarantee you, Minister, we'll be revisiting again very shortly. Deputy Rock, one minute. Uh, thank you, Cahirlock. Um, Minister, I asked one straightforward question there, which ultimately wasn't answered, uh, which is that effectively is the Irish Times report this morning, uh, does it align with your own understanding based on your meetings with the NTA and TII? Um, I think that deserves an answer. Um, I think there are a number of people who live right across the north side who have been waiting in anticipation of this project for two, three decades now. Um, and it seems as though we're at a real impasse here, and it seems as though there's a real need for clarity. I opened my original statement welcoming the clarity, um, and now I have to open my supplementary asking for clarity. So I genuinely would appreciate some clarity to be brought to bear on that matter. What I'd also say, though, in closing, is that 11 townlands were named by Deputy Lahart in his own submission there, his own contribution. Alternative routes, uncosted, untested. The minister has rightly pointed this out before. These routes simply do not have the population density to justify a metro project. That is why the current alignment of Sandyford, two swords, was the one chosen. Because of, because of Cherrywood, because of Sandyford Industrial Estate, because that's where people Thank need you. to go, and because the Green Line is running to absolute maximum capacity as of 2027. You, and that's accordingly why it's in Project Darren 2040, and Deputy, why Deputy, we want Deputy, to see it go ahead. Um, Minister, you stated in your reply, and I agree with you, that we need to move away from designing transport projects by press release. Unfortunately, however, because of the leaks in the newspaper today and the previous day, we seem to be designing transport projects by press leaks. I think there's a legitimate public interest in the public being told, is the information that was published in the newspaper today correct or not? Obviously, Minister, you know a lot more that you, than you're telling this House. It may be the case that you can tell the House, but I think you can give an indication to us as to whether or not you are prepared to stand up to the NTA if it can, persists with its proposal to dig up the Green Lewis line. I also think you need to question your civil servants more, Minister, and I need, you need to question the statutory bodies that report into you. 
You're renowned as a person who can stand up and express your own opinion. Express your own views in respect of the fact that southwest of this city is not served by any rail infrastructure. And there's an increasing division in this city between east and west. The east side of the city has the Lewis, it has the Dart. The southwest side, served by Deputy Lockhart, isn't served by any rail infrastructure, and it needs to be. Thank you, Deputy Callan. Minister, two minutes final supplementary. Yeah, I. I'm very happy to express my own views to the NTA and the TII about, about government policy. Uh, I've noticed that all deputies here, quite understandably, have been representing their own constituencies in, the, in this area. That's, that's absolutely fine. Uh, but I have, to, I have to look at it on an overall basis. And I'm not going to comment in on any particular alignments or that, are, that are being planned at the moment. I can tell, I can repeat to uh, uh, the deputies opposite that what the NTA found about the Terranure link was, was, was it found after a very thorough uh, examination and analysis of it, and, and that, that Rathfarnham Terranure link was decided that there wasn't the population there to, to merit it. That's, that's the finding they made. That's, that's the story. So I, I'm happy to tell you that and comment on that route because that's their finding, and I'm being as open as possible ab about that. Uh, in answer to Deputy Rock, um, let me say I can't tell you any more than this, the end, because, it, because again, you're asking me to publish a route at this stage, which of course I have no intention of doing, but the NTA and TIA will shortly publish a preferred route. This will reflect the NTA's and TIA's consideration of issues raised in the first consultation how best to address them, including how best to minimise disruption. NTA expects to publish this in a number of weeks, and you just have to wait for that around the second half of March. The NTA will then hold a new public consultation on a preferred route when published. After this, a decision on the final route will be made, and then this will be sub submitted to Board Plumola, at which stage statutory consultation periods will take place. That's the way it works, and it works in that way for a very, very good reason. Now, on the, on the only other issue which was raised ab about uh, four years, two years, etc., let me just repeat this to you, Deputy Lahat. I said four years because that was the, that was the subject of, spe of press speculation. I'm just telling it so that I can be quite emphatic that I wouldn't tolerate a situation where there was a four years interruption to people uh, on a major infrastructural line. It would be impossible to tolerate that. And that was, that was one of the suggestions. And two years is too long as well. I made that absolutely clear because that would, that would be a major issue in a capital city or another city which, which must, which must not happen. Clear. And I will tell you this, the NTA, the NTA it may be a proposal, it will be a proposal which will not cross my desk. And I will not, I will not sign off on a proposal of that sort. Thank you, Minister. That concludes. Um